Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with Emu, alone in her house, writing in her diary. It's her birthday, and this is the first time in 20 years that she's celebrating it alone. She used to live with someone, but it turns out that person was a killer. While painting a scenic view on a San Francisco hill, Emu witnesses a man with a gun chasing others. She takes action, and shoots down the attackers. The man approaches her, introduces himself as Yo, and extends a hand in friendship. Next, Emu is celebrating her birthday by herself at home. She has been living alone in her house for two decades, since her parents passed away. She reveals that Yo is known as Freeman, and that he has liberated her from her loneliness. As a symbolic gesture, she opens a bottle, and blows its contents onto a Yo painting made by her. Later, we find Yo at the airport, checking in for a flight. He discovers something red in his bag, which he refers to as Clay, and calls himself Porter. Even the air hostess is convinced by his explanation. While in a car, he uncovers two guns hidden within the clay. Ko, seated in the front, questions why he still uses two guns. In response, he points one of the guns at Ko, and insists he needs to go home. Ko replies that he doesn't have a home. It's revealed that the Sons of the Dragons, a Chinese triad, are content after assassinating rival Shimazaki's son, who has turned to violence in San Francisco following his son's death, becoming a threat to them. Now, he's in the city of Vancouver, right where he needed to be. At Vancouver City Hall, we see Chief Randall, Detective Netta, and Detective Forge meeting. Chief Randall announces that Detective Netta is now Forge's new boss. The stage is set for what comes next. Chief Randall meets with Shimazaki in front of his clan, the Hakushin Society, and explains that Shimazaki represents Japanese citizens, and wants to avoid unnecessary violence. Chief Randall also introduces Detective Netta, who hails from Tokyo. Shimazaki stands and reveals that his son was killed on August 4th in San Francisco, and Emu, a resident of their city, is a witness to the murder. The assassin is now targeting the witness Emu, and he implores the group not to interfere. Netta hands a letter to Forge, instructing her to go to Emu, who departs as instructed. Shimazaki reveals the person who killed his son is in their city. This assassin belongs to China and goes by the name the Sons of Dragons. He is a solitary individual with immense power, yet he prefers to work alone. The tension escalates as the danger to Emu becomes increasingly apparent. As the people in the meeting mock the situation, Chief Randall asserts that this is no laughing matter. He explains that the roots of the Sons of the Dragons go back in history, spanning 14 centuries. In the past, when the Manchus overthrew the Chinese emperor, and imposed a reign of terror, 108 militant Buddhist monks staged a revolt. Although the Manchus managed to eliminate all but five of these monks, these five survivors went on to establish the Society of the Sons of the Dragons. These monks became guardians of the Chinese people, fighting against injustice and oppression. Among them is a legendary killer known as Freeman, said to possess the essence of the dragon within him. He is believed to be immortal. His appearance can change to Chinese American Japanese or any race, yet he always embodies the spirit of the dragon, and remains the same, a superkiller. Shimazaki issues a warning ultimatum, giving them 48 hours to find Freeman, the assassin. Outside, Yo launches an attack on Shimazaki and his bodyguard, donning a mask. Simultaneously, Ko targets Shimazaki's vehicles from the top of a building. Yo confronts them, firing a barrage of bullets, that ultimately leads to Shimazaki's demise. With Ko by his side, Yo flees the scene. Emu spots him, and recognizes his face. Detective Forge gives chase, but eventually lowers her gun. Unfortunately, this results in an explosion, allowing Freeman to escape. To Detective Forge's surprise, Emu utters Yo's name, revealing a connection between them, that raises questions about her involvement with the dangerous assassin. In the car, Ko expresses satisfaction, that the Yakuza will now think twice before venturing into China, believing they've avenged their losses. Yo however exits the car with a knife, scales a wall, and enters a house, eventually reaching a room, where he gazes upon his own paintings. Later at night, Emu undergoes questioning by Netta and Forge, regarding Freeman's identity. Due to insufficient evidence, Netta instructs him to leave. Forge then informs Emu that Shimazaki has issued a 40-hour ultimatum. If they fail to locate Freeman within this time frame, it could spark a gang war in the city, resulting in casualties. The tension in the city continues to rise as the deadline approaches. Emu offers her apologies, and begins to leave, but Netta advises her that if a killer in China introduces themselves to you, it likely means they intend to harm you. Forge drops her off, and provides her with an alarm that can summon help within 20 seconds if needed. 
At night, the police maintain a presence in her garden. Emu is hesitant about having the police inside her house, given the painful memory of her parents' deaths there, but they remain outside. She informs Forge that she can't provide any assistance and can't protect her either, and enters her house. After taking a bath, she discovers that a picture of Yo is burning. When she confronts Yo with a knife, she realizes that her entire collection of paintings has been destroyed in the fire, escalating the tension between them. She manages to seduce Yo, who lies down on the bed. They both undress, and begin to get intimate. During their encounter, the alarm slips from her hand. Outside the house, Netta encounters Kimi Hinata, and promptly calls Forge for assistance. Inside, Emu and Yo continue their intimacy. However, they are interrupted by the sound of glass breaking. Yo quickly gets up and positions himself above the door. And two men enter Emu's room as she approaches. Suddenly, Yo jumps from behind and eliminates both of Ryuji's men. However, Ryuji reveals himself and confronts Yo, preparing to shoot. Ko appears from behind, and throws a knife, and throws the gun toward Yo. Both Yo and Ryuji exchange gunfire, resulting in Ryuji's death. Unfortunately, during the commotion, Emu got shot. Yo rushes to her side to check on her, while Ko instructs him to finish the job. However, he decides not to kill Emu. Instead, he picks her up, and carries her with him. After some time, Kimi arrives and starts kissing Ryuji, adding a twist to the already intense situation. Later, Yo and Ko have a heated argument about whether to save Emu. Ko threatens to reveal their secret to the family, if Yo doesn't agree to kill her. However, Yo refuses, and insists that Ko should take Emu to the hospital instead. Meanwhile, Emu regains consciousness, and Yo informs her that if she ever needs to find him, she should remember the name Hinomura. This angers Ko, who aims a gun at Emu, but Yo intervenes. Three days later, Emu wakes up in the hospital, where Netta and Forge are guarding her room. Mary comes to visit Emu, and together they devise a plan to escape. When Netta senses something is amiss, Forge checks the room, only to find Mary sleeping in her place. As Emu and Mary make their escape, Netta and Forge realize something is wrong and give chase, pursuing Emu's car. Suddenly, a Yakuza-driven tractor trailer crashes into Emu and Mary's car, causing a devastating accident. Forge remains trapped inside the car, and Netta desperately tries to rescue her. Tragically, the car explodes, and Forge loses her life in the explosion. Emu starts to suspect that she might be the target, but Yo had sent the man to locate her. In her grief and confusion, she decides to abandon everything, and head to Hinomura. Meanwhile in Shanghai City, Ryuji's gang launches an attack on a soy factory protected by the Sons of the Dragons. It becomes clear that Ryuji and his gang are still alive, and this attack serves as a message from Hanada to the Sons of the Dragons. Ryuji declares war, and he has his sights set on Freeman. After a three-day journey, Emu finally reunites with Yo. During their meeting, Yo opens up to Emu about his mysterious past. Many years ago, he was known as Yo Hinomura, a famous pottery sculptor, who was in New York for an art exhibit. While in New York, Yo stumbled upon a roll of photographic negatives. Curiosity got the best of him, and he developed the photos in his hotel bathroom. What he discovered in those pictures was shocking, they depicted the gruesome torture and execution of a man adorned with dragon tattoos, strangely similar to the tattoos Yo would later have. But his investigation took a sinister turn. Before he could leave his hotel, Yo was drugged and abducted by a secretive group, known as the Sons of the Dragons. This mysterious organization used unique acupuncture techniques, to implant hidden messages into Yo's mind, controlling his actions without his knowledge. As Yo got entangled in the Sons of the Dragon's web, he embarked on his first mission, to assassinate Mafia boss Antonio Rossi. During this mission, something unexpected happened. While carrying out the execution, tears welled up in Yo's eyes, earning him the name Crying Freeman, a name that would become infamous in the world of assassins. Ko informs Yo about Ryuji's gang attacking a soy factory in Shanghai, and their declaration of war against the Sons of the Dragons. Emu initially tries to stop Yo from attending Shimazaki's funeral, but she eventually convinces him that it's necessary for him to be there. Yo and Ko travel to Shimazaki's funeral outside Tokyo, to kill Ryuji. At the funeral, Neta is also in attendance. Meanwhile, Yo and Ko manage to capture Mr. Dagaki. Under Yo's influence, Dagaki calls Ryuji, and two of Ryuji's men arrive. Dagaki tells them that Yo is his new boss, and Ko takes the opportunity to thank him, before killing him. Later, Neta approaches Ryuji directly without consulting anyone, and accuses him of being the prime suspect in the murder of 16 people at the soy factory. 
Neta reveals that Ryuji was the one who sent Shimazaki's son to San Francisco, and people are keen to learn more about this. Ryuji introduces Neta to his wife, Kimi, and admits that he's a cop. The three of them pressure Neta for information about Emu's arrival in Tokyo with a fake passport. Afterwards, Neta follows Kimi to her room, and is about to kiss her, when a photographer takes a photo, startling him. Yo and Ko arrive to meet Ryuji, who becomes suspicious upon seeing them, and points a gun at them. However, when Yo doesn't react as expected, Ryuji believes they are his associates. In a secret encounter, Kimi and Neta engage in a passionate moment inside a closet. During their intimate moment, Kimi confides in Neta about a shocking revelation. The Shimazaki family was framed by the Hanadas to be eliminated, allowing the Hanadas to seize control of the clan. Meanwhile, Yo and Ko take action to wipe out the entire clan, but a dramatic turn of events unfolds. Just as Ko is about to execute Yo for his supposed betrayal, Ryuji intervenes, and shoots Ko down. Moments later, the entire complex erupts in a massive explosion, resulting in Ryuji's demise. Yo returns to his home, preparing for a final showdown. He sets up the area to self-destruct, and arms himself to face off against Neta, Kimi, and her henchmen. Despite sustaining injuries from Neta, Yo manages to eliminate the henchman and overcome Neta, ultimately defeating him. In a desperate move, Yo stabs Kimi near her heart. As a sign of her surrender, Kimi promises that she won't pursue him and Emu, in exchange for sparing her life. With this agreement in place, Yo and Emu make their exit from the premises. However, just as they depart, Neta attempts to shoot them from behind, but is swiftly dispatched by Kimi. Yo and Emu ride off into the sunset on a speedboat, leaving the turmoil behind them. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.